Well, my name is Kenneth Frampton and the title is Mendes de Rocha. Questions on Mendes de Rocha. I think, you know, Mendes de Rocha is very, uh, is a very important figure because he's also part of the Brazilian uh, reinforced concrete tradition. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, he is obviously an architect of Sao Paulo and of the uh, school in Sao Paulo. Uh, uh, all of those things are, are part of his um, biography and uh, he was a very important figure um, in the school before the military junta fired him and also João Villanova Artigas, you know, who are both um, professors in the school for their political um, views, basically, you know. And um, I don't think that uh, Paolo has ever been a member of the Communist Party, unlike Artigas, who was uh, unquestionably, uh, you know, totally committed to communism, as was, of course, Oscar Niemeyer. But uh, this kind of uh, heroic cultural and political tra tradition, which uh, uh, Mendes is part of, you know, is something that uh, is important to me and um, and balances out in a way the famous uh, reputation of Niemeyer, of, uh, in other words, the Rio de Janeiro, the school of Rio, uh, as opposed to the school of uh, Sao Paulo. So he's played a very important role in that regard. I think, I think what, one of the most interesting things about Paulo's work is the idea of a sort of catalytic intervention. I mean, he recognizes that the, um, the modern product of the avant-garde of the 30s, for example, is not attainable. And, uh, but it's still important to produce a work which uh, has a catalytic effect on its immediate environment. Uh, has a, is a kind of public work. I mean, I think uh, his finest, work, uh, finest works are, are, are public. And I'm thinking in particular of his 19, uh, excuse me, his 2008 project for uh, for Paris, you know, for the so-called sports boulevard in Paris, which was part of the French attempt to gain the Olympics for Paris uh, in 2012, which they, it's an effort that failed. But this um, this proposal of a kind of uh, athletic campus, really, in the chaos of the um, of the periphery around Paris, the, the, you know, the usual kind of automobile chaos, you know. Uh, he, he would, he, his project was to place in that, you know, sort of clear cut out uh, uh, kind of Acropolis-like uh, form that, um, that would stand against, you know, the uh, chaos of the periphery. Uh, it's an extraordinary project. Uh, it's very regrettable that it wasn't uh, achieved and uh, well his work of course as with many other architects of quality is full of projects which were not uh, I, I, that's a difficult question I, I this question of his influence outside of Brazil uh, and I have to be honest I think there is you know the, the in, a, in a way the Brazilian scene is not re reproducible in my opinion outside of Brazil and um, the, the capacity of the society, uh, despite all its turbulence, to, to build at a very large scale, you know, this, this is uh, something that's hard to find, you know, in Europe, for example, but also in, uh, in, um, well, in other parts of Latin America and uh, in uh, Africa and in, in India. It's very, it's very hard to find people working at that scale. I mean, there was a period in Canada where but this is even before Mendes uh, does his best work, basically, where, uh, you know, particularly in the late 60s, when, uh, when, the, when the Canadians are building at that scale. I'm thinking in particular of uh, Simon Fraser University outside of Vancouver. But this, you know, predates uh, the influence of Mendes to Russia, in effect. So it's, my answer would have to be finally, no, I don't see there's much evidence of his influence outside of Brazil. You know, I think one of the most interesting things of uh, uh, Mendes' work is, is his house in Butanta, you know, which, uh, which is one of his sort of earliest works, where you have a, a reinforced concrete house, uh, also very ingeniously related to a kind of earthwork, 
It's in the suburb of Sao Paulo. And, and the house is, is conceived and laid out as a kind of micro-public space. You know, so the, the, the bedrooms, in fact, are top-lit. It's a house on one floor, elevated above the ground. And, and on one side you have a, a living, a rather large living space, which is, of course, a public domain. And on the other side you have the kind of entrance foyer of the house, which is also yet another kind of pu micro-public space. So in a way, I think it's a unique house for, for this particular quality, you know, for the quality of a private house, which is also public building in a way. Of course, it's a family house. It's, it's, it's public in the sense that there is a kind of um, a space of public appearance inside the house, although it's still a private house. That's, a, that's something I find particularly impressive. And, and in general, of course, I think his use of structure, his heroic use of structure, is, is extremely unique. And, uh, but still, it, it's part of this kind of uh, large-scale Brazilian concrete tradition.